a KQED television production. It kind of was like the bang that set off the night. That is the funkiest restaurant. The honey on the prawns will make your insides smile. So. <laughs> More tortillas, please. <laughs> What is comfort food if it isn't gluten and grease? I love creme brulee. <laughs> the octopus should have been like quadrupus because it was really small. <laughs> and you know that when you split something, all the calories evaporate and then there's none. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2015 Subaru Impreza are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru, online at Subaru.com. Integrated Resources Group, over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin, online at marblecompany.com. Natural Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport, with service to Europe, Mexico, Hawaii, and across the USA. Park close, fly on time. Learn more at exploreonyx.com. Support KQED's vehicle donation program and donate a car to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by cars. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This time, PhD chemical engineering student, Ali Landry, is French-Canadian by birth with family from Bolivia. Her studies have taken her from North Carolina to the Bay Area, which catalyzed her culinary crusade. And art director Jack Whalen is a fun-loving guy with an appreciation for historical buildings lovingly restored, especially when they boast an antique bar and a dining establishment producing creative comfort food. And translator Anthony Thomas speaks Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, and Japanese all while studying Mandarin. Make us feel bad there. <laughs> so it's no surprise that his restaurant of choice is a fusion spot. This upscale Walnut Creek location on North Main Street, it's called Oisey Bowl Chinese Restaurant. My name is Linda, and the name of our restaurant is Oisey Bowl Chinese Restaurant. We came from Hong Kong. The restaurant was built by my husband, Michael. Ten years ago, he created all the dishes, and then he made me try it, so I'm a guinea pig. Although he passed away three years ago, we still keep the way that he wants us to do, which keep everything fresh and clean and neat, because I know he's watching us up there. When the weather is good, uh, everybody likes to sit at the patio. And we are dog friendly, so you can bring your dog, and we treat them as the princess and prince. We are serving the Sichuan style, and a kind of uh, mix and match. Everything is cooked by order, so we can do anything that we can do. My chef is working uh, together with us for about 10 years already, and he is Mr. Yu. He do everything with his heart, so that's why it tastes good. All right, Anthony, the, that amount of languages has my head spinning. I'm very jealous of you. <laughs> ah, we can bad, speak no. in English, though, right? Is oh, of okay? course, okay. anytime you feel like. Now, talk to me about the pronunciation of Oisey Bowl, because there's a number of different ways that right. people talk about it. On the building, it looks like O-I-C Bowl, but mm -hmm. Oisey is the way it's pronounced, actually. Oisey being a play on words, it means delicious in Japanese, mm -hmm. Oishi. But if you say O-I-C, you're okay. Yes, and that's for people to find it on the building, because people <laughs> cannot type into Google Oisey and know what you're talking about. So <laughs> O-I dash C, makes it easy go. for everybody. All right, now that we know how to say it, tell us what people should order. The princess chicken, the green beans, and the honey walnut prawns. Fantastic. With the princess chicken, sometimes mm -hmm. people heavily batter it and it kind of turns the glue in your mouth. But it's OIC <laughs> bowl, it's awesome. It's just the right amount of chicken, just enough batter. And then the sauce that they use at the very end, it just lights up your mouth. The honey walnut prawns, huge prawns, 
perfectly cooked, tender but not mushy, and then they give you that last bit of glaze where it's not glopping off the prawn onto the plate, but it's, it's perfect. It's, it's all about flavor. It's all about just the right amount of glaze versus the food itself. Do you agree, Allie, with his sauce equation there? <clears throat> I do, and I was hoping to try the honey walnut prawns. It's probably oh. one of my favorite dishes, but I went with a friend who is a not seafood lover. Oh my uh, goodness, So instead yes. we got the general sows, so mm, equally okay, awesome. sweet, battered, sticky. And I agree, yeah, it was very nicely sauced. The, the batter was crispy, soaked it up, but it still maintained its integrity. It didn't just slosh off. Right. Um, so I liked that a lot. And it came with a side of steamed broccoli, which slightly healthy, so <laughs> I used it to sop up the nice. extra sticky, sweet sauce. You got so fried and then you got the veggie. Yeah, yeah you balance yeah, it out. Um, but then we also got the curry beef, which was mm -hmm. drowning in sauce, but that was a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so the sauce is really that curry, like kind of coconutty, creamy flavor. Um, mm -hmm. So you want more and more of that. And so I really like that nice. a lot. Well, we tried the beef with ginger and scallions, which mm -hmm. I agree with you on the sauce. It was just the perfect amount of sauce. And it, we talked to the owner and she said they use a brown sauce, which is soy based with oysters so it's a really great combination with beef and ginger and scallion which you don't really get in a traditional Chinese food place so it's right. what I really liked about um, this place is that it's just got these modern twists on these traditional Chinese dishes. The uh, Singapore style noodles, oh, yeah. so it's basically rice noodles that have shrimp and uh, they can have other meat. I think there's a little pork in mm -hmm. this place too. And it's got curry, mm -hmm. which is just a great combination of the way they throw these things together. And um, unlike other times I've had it, it's uh, it's not greasy at all. It's very mm -hmm. fresh and right. just all the ingredients just amalgamate to this beautiful dish and mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. So freshness, did you yeah. get the sense of fresh ingredients? And Yes, the green mm -hmm. beans especially, they're crunchy crisp and that's important. There's nothing worse than soggy green yeah. beans. Oh, oh nothing gosh. worse. <laughs> well, a few things worse. <laughs> uh, so the other two dishes we had were the mapo tofu in a meat sauce and then we had twice cooked pork. I was kind of hoping for more meat in both of them. Uh, the twice cooked pork, like you're thinking, okay, I'm going to get pork with that, but most of it was actually just cabbage and mushroom medley. Um, but the pork itself was good, I just wanted more of it. Uh, the mapo tofu came in this pork kind of brown gravy type sauce, and I was hoping for more red spicy chili mm -hmm. sauce, so it wasn't quite what I was expecting, but they were still both pretty good dishes. We tried the uh, steamed barbecue pork buns and mm -hmm. the uh, shrimp and chive dumplings, which I thought were really great. Mm -hmm. Not greasy at all, uh, very fluffy and doughy for the pork buns and just really fresh and well-wrapped, super flavorful dumplings. And this is a white tablecloth upscale dining destination. Did you feel like you got bang for your buck? I thought so. I mean, it's as far as traditional Chinese food places, mm -hmm. the decor here blows most places away. Mm -hmm. It's very modern. Right. And yeah, I, I thought that the prices were actually very, uh, the very beers decent. Are really yeah. cheap compared the, to the beers. The beers are? Yeah, so wine, cheap. The house cocktails are all really well priced for, uh, you know, the area especially. Right. They do have very affordable bottles of wine as well that match with the cuisine. What we did just had uh, a couple different types of Chinese beer um, to try awesome. and taste. And yeah, they're good. They're definitely much cheaper than any kind of draft or mm -hmm. glass beers in Berkeley. Which means you had more, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Of course. Yeah, but then the ambience, I, I like that they were trying to be a little more elegant, but I felt like people who were going were just casual, like after work with their families. So I thought there was kind of a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we asked for chopsticks, he came by with disposable chopsticks and oh, took them out right. of the package for us. So I mean, I'm, I'm fine eating with disposable chopsticks, but then I have, you know, linens and silver uh, forks and things. So there was a bit of a disconnect there. Every time we've gone, we've gotten awesome service. You can't even get your drink past the ice. They're like, I'll feel that. You're like, wait, I was still, you know. <laughs> They're very much attentive. The owner, Linda, yeah. will come and speak to you. She'll ask you how you're doing. It's not the typical, oh, hey, how's your day? And she heads on. She speaks with you. It's a back and forth. So mm -hmm. service has always been awesome there. You agree? I do. I, I thought the service was very attentive. I also really liked the, uh, the, the presentation of everything, the stemware and the, the tableware was very nice and uh, just all in all a really great place. Fantastic. All right, this is your spot, Anthony. Wrap it mm -hmm. up for us. Awesome, awesome service, amazing princess chicken and the honey, the honey walnut prawns will make your insides smile. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Allie. Uh, I'd say definitely above average Chinese food. Um, and a slightly nicer atmosphere, decent price, a little far for me, but I would go back if I was in the area. And Jack? Yeah, I'd say great decor and really interesting modern twists on traditional Chinese food, very nice. 
All right, if you would like to try Oisey Bowl Chinese Restaurant, it's on North Main in Walnut Creek. The telephone number is 925-287-8118. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are accepted, and the average dinner tab without drinks is around $15. Rich French-influenced dishes of Puebla, combined with the fiery rustic flavors of Jalisco, make Ali's Pick unique. On 65th Street in Emeryville, you'll find every bite hecho en casa at Los Moles. At Los Moles, we try to give an environment for the customers to eat how we eat at home, traditionally how my father grew up eating at home and how I grew up eating at home. I am Edgar Saldana, a manager here at Los Moles in Emeryville. Everything is from family. Like I have my auntie as the bartender, my sister's here with me. My mother's at host uh, a couple times here as well. My uncle is a dessert guy. Most items, of course, are typical Mexican food, but my father loves to have his own style. My name is Lito Saldana. I'm the chef owner of Los Moles. Well, recipes I learned from my mom, my dad, my grandma. Mole is a thick sauce. In Mexico, every single house has different recipe. Now I have like 15 kinds. A couple years back, we won for the best margarita of the bay. It was aguacate, avocado margarita. Most of the drinks you can think of, any fruit, we, we make it here in margaritas. I, I, I would like to say you just provide your own experience, your own culture. People notice right away. That's what we like, that's what we're aiming for. All right, Al, you have a French-Canadian background and yes. a Bolivian background. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they combined that you appreciate Mexican food. Yeah, well, it kind of makes you more curious about other mm -hmm. types of South American, Central, or Mexican types of cuisine. And how did you discover Los Moles? It was a little bit by accident. I had one of those online deals. Mm -hmm. um, so we went, nice. my boyfriend and I went to Los Moles. It was late afternoon. It was in the middle of Enryville. It seemed pretty dead. Uh, but when we stepped in, it was just full of people because they have their weekend brunch buffet and it just had their best moles, it had uh, all their types of meat, so we loved their carnitas, which is sort of the roasted pork dish. They have green moles, they have some that are spicier than others. My favorite is the pipian mole, it's made with pumpkin seeds. And you get a lot more of a smoky roasted flavor with it, but it still has those nuts in there that makes it really luxurious and creamy and smooth. That's why I love going for the weekend for the brunch buffet. Uh -huh. You get to try all of them side by side, and that way you can kind of pick out the differences between them and um, see which ones you like better. I'd gone into Los Moles uh, having an interesting experience with, with moles in general and kind of uh, wasn't the biggest fan of Not having chocolate in there, <laughs> but the way they did it was great mm -hmm. and our waiter was really great and he said there's an off menu item, you can get cuatro moles, mm -hmm. so you can get a plate with all four and try them out so you don't have to just get roped into one. All the moles were very well done and to put the moles with the handmade corn tortillas yes. and their, their green rice was just incredible. I always appreciate when a place does their own tortillas by oh, hand. Yes. What did you have, Anthony? Um, we had the emoladas, mm -hmm. we had the red mole, and then I had the Taco Tuesday because I am a glutton. As far as the Taco Tuesdays were, the meat was really, really soft, tender, I appreciated that. Um, I felt that they were taking it a little safe with the flavor. I'm from Southern California, I'm, I love spicy food, and I thought that I was going to go there and just really get the whole super savory thing. So it wasn't quite as spicy as I like, but value-wise it was awesome. The portions were great, and uh, especially since everything is handmade, and they sometimes make just two or three batches of stuff a day. So I think for freshness and how much you get and just the, the handmadeness of it, that it's a really good value, yeah. Did you try their, their salsas that they have on the side? Yes, I did. I had the green and the red, actually. Okay. Uh, the mole... Uh, like I said, I had the red, and we were looking for more of a stronger bite to the food. But then again, not everybody is used to that. Yeah, not all moles are ten necessarily spicy. Um, but I think it's a lot of the nuances of the chocolate and certain right. ones, or maybe the pumpkin seed. And the last time I went, I actually had the shrimp and chipotle sauce, not really a mole sauce. And I was expecting just any kind of like cream sauce, but I thought that sauce had so much flavor to it. You could taste the smokiness of the chipotles, right. um, and it covered these shrimp, which are just perfectly cooked, really plump and juicy. Mm. Um, and there's slivers of onions in there. That was basically just a way to get more sauce into right. you. Right. Nice. Um, and so I th actually thought that sauce was, again, not necessarily spicy, like kicks you in the face, but just very uh, delicate and interesting. It had those flavors in there. 
We had the empanada, uh, which was very good, and uh, just really super flaky crust, and the beautifully flavored shredded beef inside, and it had like a uh, cabbage mm -hmm. uh, topping mm -hmm. on it that was just acidic and bright, and it kind of brought everything together on the plate, and it was a great appetizer to share. Mm -hmm. The cantorita, which mm -hmm. is like agave tequila with squirt, which mm -hmm. is like a, a you know a soda <laughs> uh, on the rocks, and they served it to I've us. Never heard that squirt for a long time. That's right. That's they right. served it in this clay like tankard, which was yeah. really great. So it's right. really pottery, you know, and it had the salted rim, and I thought that was great. And mm -hmm. I loved the idea that it came in the clay pot, you mm -hmm. know, and then at right. each table you have a clay pot with water, yeah. and you to so you pour your own water out of this kind of uh, pottery Gordon. from that right. area, you know, mm -hmm. which was really great. I've never actually been to a place that did that, so that was a really mm -hmm. nice touch too. And the plates yeah. too, they're all yeah. clay. Uh -huh. Um, and then they also have flan. I've tried their vanilla and their chocolate flan, and they're both just nice and creamy, luxurious, and very, a little sweet, but it's good. We had the churros, uh, which were mm -hmm. incredible, and with the ice cream, which was just really great. Again, with that kind of hot and cold, and just the sweet and savory combination of it. It's super fresh, perfectly dusted with sugar. They even There's put that. a little caramel happy face on top of the, uh, <laughs> nice. the ice cream. So Well worked it. That yeah. totally makes it worth yep. the tour. You'll go back so. to do that. <laughs> All right, Allie, this is your spot. Give us a quick wrap-up. Uh, if you love moles or not, uh, you can find something to eat at Los Moles, and it's a delicious place. Okay, and Jack? This is a great eclectic place for the, the whole family with a great collection of ethnic food. It's awesome. Okay, and Anthony? You know, I was hoping for a great spicy food, but it's an awesome value, and I definitely would recommend people to go there. If you would like to try Los Moles, it's on 65th Street at Hollis in Emeryville. The telephone number is 510-285-6635. It's open every day for breakfast and lunch, dinner Tuesday through Sunday, and brunch on the weekends. Reservations are accepted, and the average dinner tab without drinks is around $20. Drinking wine makes your mouth water. That's because of the acidity. Now, all fruit has it, and grapes are fruit. But what role does acidity play in the taste and style of wine? It creates food-friendly freshness. Along with tannins, acidity helps wine age. Acidity balances the sweetness in wine. The answer is all of the above, of course. If you've added lemon juice or vinegar to a dish, you understand it adds liveliness and freshness to your food. The same goes for wine. When it comes to aging, acidity is a little like wine Botox. Along with tannins, it acts as a preservative to help wine age beautifully. Finally, think of acidity as the perfect tango partner for sweetness. It counteracts fruit flavors to create balance in wine. You can take a trip back in time at Jack's Place to an historical building with restored stained glass windows, a piano bar, and menu filled with comfort food. It's tucked away in the small town of Point Richmond, and it's called Hotel Mac Restaurant. This is one of the most beautiful bar in this area, that's what they say. My name is Lara Che. I'm the owner of Hotel Mac Restaurant at Point Richmond. Point Richmond, uh, it's at the foot of the Richmond Sun Rafael Bridge. You got lots of art here, music, uh, lots of historic places in this town. My name is Jaime Molina. I am the general manager and, and head chef. As far as the bar scene, we do have classic cocktails and we have the new ones that we can do. Our bar staff is very knowledgeable in that respect. You get a lot of regulars from all over town and on all walks of life too. <laughs> this is like a cheers bar. Everybody know everybody. We have a live music seven days a week. Our menu is driven by uh, what our customers expect from us. The classic surrounded by some surprises. It's driven by seasons and it's driven by uh, what's available locally. I have people that work with me for 20 plus years. Service personnel to kitchen personnel and we have some very loyal customers that we love to see. Hotel Meg is amazing, awesome place. Once you are in here, then nobody asks you to come twice, but you will come twice. Okay, Hotel Mac. This is uh, this has been around a long time. The building dates to 1911, doesn't it? It basically sprung up as the town sprung up, and mm -hmm. the refinery came to Richmond, and it's been serving patrons pretty much nonstop for over 100 years. So, it also serves as a hotel, so you could stay there if you needed a place to stay. If you and drink too much at the that's right <laughs> there you bar, go. you go upstairs. Yeah, and then downstairs is this is this great space that's been restored to pretty much exactly how it looked, you know, when it opened. There's a pianist in the corner and a little lounge area 
a wine cellar, which is a little downstairs, which anyone can sit in. There's a little upstairs dining area too. So it's great. And the, the food's incredible. It's basically, you know, American food, comfort food, if you will. They have great deals on wine. You come in on Friday and they'll give you free corkage. Which you, means you can bring your own bottle. Right. And, and not pay a fee, a yeah. corkage fee. And right. then 50% uh, off the whole wine list. And the bar is the anchor, you know, right. of, the, of the place, isn't it? Restored in 1978. It really gives you this throwback in time. Right. Yes. What did you have when you went? I had the Baja cod sandwich. The flavor was light for the cod, not too heavily battered. Coleslaw was good, uh, crunchy, and it just felt like he mentioned it, good comfort food. You hold it and it falls out on the plate like a good fish sandwich should. So, right. and it came with garlic fries, which also, you know, you can't go wrong with can't garlic fries. Can't go wrong. Fries. Just make sure everybody at the table has the garlic fries. I Always. did no sharing and I don't even feel bad about <laughs> it. I feel was bad like, about touch it. my plate, nope. we we're going to have an issue here. So, nope. Nope. <laughs> Allie, what did you get? Uh, I shared a sort of hodgepodge of things with uh, my boyfriend who came with me. Um, we shared the rib plate with uh -huh. sweet potato fries. So I'm from North Carolina. Uh -oh. You typically smoke your barbecue. I wasn't really expecting that from a place like this. Right. But, so I thought they did it well. It was really nice and succulent meat. The, the meat just fell off the bone. Yeah. Um, the sauce was a little too sweet for me, but uh, the meat itself was good. Again, I just wanted more of it. Uh, I think there was only three ribs for a half rack, which I wasn't really expecting so little, but it was good. Um, and then we shared a couple of the appetizers. So we had oysters Rockefeller. That's such a classic Exactly. Dish. I was thinking it's such anymore. an old school right. place. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah, get a Caesar right. salad. Let's get oysters Rockefeller. Right. Um, but on top, they just kind of put this green sauce and a white sauce on there, and they had no texture to it, didn't have any crispy, cheesy crust to it. It kind of just became very gloopy. Mm. Um, so the oysters Rockefeller were a bit of a disappointment. Um, uh -huh. Caesar salad, it kind of fell flat for me. I think for a Caesar salad in particular, you're not eating it to be healthy. You're eating it because it's drenched in <laughs> cheese and it's right. drenched in That's sauce. Right. Um, and this one, they left the romaine pieces whole mm. and the sauce didn't really coat it well. So whatever uh -huh. cheese was on there just kind of fell off. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, it felt like a plate of romaine leaves. But the mac and cheese was really, really good. It came in sort of really, really creamy, luxurious uh, white cheese sauce. It wasn't just sort of whatever old cheddar cheese. It had <laughs> some kind of like funky cheese flavor to it, which I really liked. And for free, you could add pancetta to it, which was like nuggets mm. of gold yeah. in there. So <laughs> yeah. The mac and cheese was really, really good. It's probably the highlight. Oh, yeah, I had the crab cakes. Um, they were good. It was definitely had a lot of crab to it. It was really finely shredded, so it became kind of creamy, which I liked. Some people might not like that in a crab cake. They want like big jumbo pieces, but I liked that. And it came with um, sort of chipotle cream sauce on the side, so you can dip into it. It was really small, though, for the price. Um, I think it was on the order of magnitude as the mac and cheese, but I felt like I got so much more for the mac and cheese. So price-wise, some dishes were a little off, I thought. You've got a good appetite. I like to see yes. that. Right. <laughs> well, it started off with a um, chicken curry soup, which was creamy and very light and, and flavorful. It wasn't overpowering one way or the other, which was nice. I had the prime rib, which was great. The center cut, very well done, nice and rare. Really creamy mashed potatoes on the side, which were great. Fresh vegetables, which were really nice. And we also had the, the owner, she has her own bread recipe, so that's the bread that they uh -huh. had there, which is really interesting and good. Yeah, you fill up on the bread. Watch out, I can tell you're one of those uh, yeah. guys, aren't you? Again, I mm -hmm. did. The bread was very good. Yeah. They did not bring me more, and I was like, where's the bread? You know. Yeah. <laughs> so how was the service? The service, um, when we got there, I think our lady forgot about us a little bit. We were upstairs, right. and we're kind of in the back corner but I think she kind of got caught up in the other stuff and forgot about it. That's you not know. nice, I didn't it? think so. I was making the sad bread eyes and everything, and they just... <laughs> I actually had great service. Um, it took me a little while to figure out exactly what I wanted, and she'd come back and check on me, and I'd say, oh, another minute, but then she'd come back again. We had a table overlooking the bar area, which was great for people watching. Did anyone have dessert? Yeah, so I had the cheesecake with mm -hmm. uh, nuts on top and caramel, and also had a little ribbon of, of chocolate at the bottom and a graham cracker. Crust. And it's a huge piece, so my fiance and I got to split it, mm. and it was great. And you know that when you split something, all the calories evaporate, and then there's none. <laughs> that's See, right, yeah. That's the perfect way to go. Loving the way you think. Mm -hmm. If you deny oh, the yeah. calories, they don't exist. That's nice. true. That's right. I like that they came around with the dessert tray, so you could yeah. kind of see what you wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to make sure what I had had ice cream on it. Nice. It's right. just a golden rule. It has to have ice cream. And so we wanted the bread pudding. It didn't come with ice cream, but the waitress was very accommodating again and said mm -hmm. she'd put one on there. That was good. Um, but the bread pudding was great. It was big size. I, we split it. And it was more than enough. And it was a standard bread pudding, and it was, it was well done. 
Excellent. Well, this is your spot, so wrap it up for us. Well, I think the, the last true small town that's left in the East Bay <laughs> is this gym, and you can go there and uh, enjoy some great comfort food and some great uh, company. All right, and Allie? Uh, I would say go to Hotel Mac for the great ambiance, the friendly people, the live piano was a big bonus, um, and then having some decent food on the side. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Anthony? Definitely agree, awesome ambiance, super friendly people. Bit of a drive for me, so it's not a place I would frequent a lot, but overall, beautiful place. All right, if you would like to try Hotel Mac Restaurant, it's on Washington Avenue in Point Richmond. The telephone number is 510-233-0576. It's open for lunch on weekdays and dinner every night. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab without drinks is around $30. Well, I have to thank my great guests on this week's show. Anthony Thomas, whose Oisey Bowl Chinese restaurant in Walnut Creek delivers diverse Asian flavors. Ali Landry and the expertly executed salsa and sauces at Los Moles in Emeryville. And Jack Wayland and the traditional American fare at the restored Victorian throwback Hotel Mac Restaurant in Point Richmond. Now, we really want to hear from you about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So go to our website at kqed.org slash check, please. It's where you can apply to be a guest on the show and where you can watch every episode or subscribe to the podcast. You can also read my notes on the wines we're drinking today. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for exclusive behind the scenes clips, pics, and notes from me. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Salud. Salud. Cheers. 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 Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2015 Subaru Impreza are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru, online at Subaru.com. Integrated Resources Group, over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG, in Brisbane and Dublin, online at MarbleCompany.com. Natural Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at Sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport, with service to Europe, Mexico, Hawaii, and across the USA. Learn more at iFlyOAK.com. Onyx. Team Talk. Redefined. Learn more at ExploreOnyx.com. Support KQED's vehicle donation program and donate a car to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by cars.